Я во внутреннем клубе с кратери. Я луна на много. Их очень много, они везде. Они вас... The Apollo missions were thought to have ended with Apollo 17, but is that the whole story? Speculations have long whispered of secret Apollo missions hidden from the public eye. Then, in 2011, something unbelievable emerged. Shocking footage of the Apollo 18 mission, which NASA had kept classified, sent shockwaves across the country. Could this shocking footage reveal why NASA never returned to the moon? Why didn't the Apollo 18 astronauts ever return home? Here's the truth NASA doesn't want you to know. In 1970, the final three Apollo flights, 18, 19, and 20, were canceled. Victims of the penny-pinching Nixon administration, and their hardware was either shelved or used for the Skylab program. As a result, only 12 humans from six missions have walked on the moon, or so the U.S. government would have you believe. In 2011, a found-footage science fiction horror film, Apollo 18, revealed the truth about the canceled mission and what really happened to the astronauts. In December 1974, two years after the Apollo 17 mission, the crew of the canceled Apollo 18 mission was informed that it would now proceed as a top-secret Department of Defense mission to deliver a classified payload. Since the payload was meant to be kept off the books, the mission details and launch were also kept a secret from the American public. The astronauts selected to visit the moon aboard Apollo 18 were Commander Nathan Walker, Lieutenant Colonel John Gray, and Captain Ben Anderson. The spacecraft was launched at night to avoid drawing too much attention. The mission was simple. The crew had to plant an early warning detector for intercontinental ballistic missile attacks from the USSR. On December 25th, the crew reached the lunar surface. However, Gray remained in orbit aboard the Apollo Command Module Freedom, while Walker and Anderson landed on the south pole of the moon in the Apollo Lunar Module Liberty. We're going for the moon. Loud and clear. Take her down. Here we go, Ben. You ready? I sure am. As Anderson and Walker planted the ICBM detector on the moon's surface, they took rock samples though Anderson noted something odd about them, describing the rocks as strange. Catching the two astronauts unaware, the camera caught a subtle but unsettling movement, a rock shifting in a nearby crater. Back aboard their lunar module Liberty, they heard unexplained noises outside. The motion sensor camera revealed something strange, a small rock moving on its own near their location. When they contacted Houston, they were told the sounds were just interference from the ICBM detector. The next day, Anderson found one of the rock samples lying on the floor of Liberty, despite having securely stored them all. I saw something at the bottom. I'm going to take a look. <laughs> While checking the ICBM detector, Anderson stumbled upon a disturbing discovery, footprints leading to an abandoned yet functional Soviet LK lander stained with blood. Pushing forward, Anderson entered a nearby crater, describing the ground beneath him as oddly softer. There he came upon a grim sight, a dead cosmonaut lying beside a shattered space helmet. On the ridge, 10 o'clock. Found a Soviet helmet and are now falling what appear to be tracks made by a Soviet co Concerned, Walker questioned Houston about the presence of Soviet equipment and personnel, but Houston dismissed the issue, instructing them to continue the mission. Later that night, as they tried to sleep, Walker was jolted awake by strange noises and something bumping against the lunar module, leaving them on edge and uncertain about what truly lurked outside. The next day, the duo found that the flag they had planted was missing, but since their mission was complete and they already had a return date set, they didn't think much about it. Unfortunately, before they could set off from the lunar surface, Liberty experienced shaking so intense they had to delay the launch. When the astronauts checked the module, they couldn't believe what had happened. Their tiny haven on the moon was extensively damaged. As Walker explored the area around their module, he was terrified to find their flag ripped to pieces. The motion sensor camera was also missing, and the rover was tipped on its side. 
Fear gripped him like never before. He knew at that moment they were not alone on the far side of the moon. What the hell are you doing? What the angel kill us, folks! Houston, this is liberty. Do you read me? God! His terror compounded when he spotted non-human tracks outside Liberty. The biggest question on his mind was, who was stalking them and what was their intention? Before he could think anymore, he felt something crawling on his body inside his spacesuit. Imagine his horror when he saw a spider-like creature crawling inside his helmet. Something else out here. Something's moving. Set inside my suit. I can't get it out! It's our helmet! Anderson was unaware of what was happening to Walker. The only thing he knew was that he found Walker unconscious outside of Liberty. Walker denied all the events that had transpired, but he bore a wound on his chest that told a very different and chilling story. It wasn't an ordinary wound. In fact, Anderson pulled out a moon rock from inside it. Before Anderson could analyze the alarming situation the crew was in, Walker smashed the moon rock with a hammer, contaminating the insides of the spaceship. And then there was the problem of excessive interference that made it impossible for the astronauts to contact Houston or Gray. Anderson began to suspect that the true purpose of the so-called ICBM warning device was not what they were told. He speculated that it was actually meant to monitor the alien presence on the moon and that the device itself was causing the interference they had been experiencing. When Anderson and Walker tried to deactivate it, they found it had been completely destroyed with the same strange non-human tracks surrounding it. Soon after, Walker started showing alarming signs of a growing infection. His veins darkened with discoloration, possibly from necrosis, and his eyes turned bloodshot. His behavior shifted as well, becoming increasingly contentious and paranoid. Inside Liberty, the mission cameras captured something terrifying. A rock sample began to move on its own, revealing that the aliens were disguising themselves as moon rocks. Walker's paranoia spiraled out of control. Becoming delusional, he tried to destroy the cameras inside Liberty with a hammer. He accidentally damaged other critical controls in his frenzy, causing the lander to lose pressure. Realizing their oxygen was running out, Anderson and Walker had no choice but to go to the abandoned Soviet LK lander their only hope for survival. They set off in their lunar rover, but Walker grew increasingly agitated. His paranoia deepened and he became convinced they couldn't leave the moon without risking the infection spreading to Earth. In his panic, he caused the rover to crash, but as the vehicle tumbled, the camera caught glimpses of something horrifying, large space rocks moving, sprouting legs like spiders, confirming the presence of the camouflaged alien life they feared. Anderson passed out, but Walker was no longer with him when he woke. Looking for his partner, he reached a crater only to find that his friend had been pulled to it by the same creatures he had seen earlier. Anderson tried to free Walker, but before he could save him, the aliens confronted him with full might, forcing him to abandon his chase and return to the Soviet LK. Once inside, he made contact with USSR Mission Control, who were able to connect him to the Department of Defense. He had hoped for salvation, but instead the Deputy Secretary informed Anderson that they couldn't return to Earth as they were infected by whatever was haunting the moon. The Secretary admitted that they were aware of the situation. However, there was nothing the Department of Defense could do to save them now. Although bad news was crushing his spirits from every side, he remained determined and contacted Gray, making arrangements for Anderson to return to freedom. As he was preparing the lander to launch, a disheveled walker arrived, claiming he had survived the alien encounter. He asked Anderson to let him in so they could both go far away from the moon and its inhabitants. However, Walker looked different. He was now completely psychotic, and Anderson was afraid to let him in for his own safety. But Walker wasn't planning to go away so easily. He started to hammer down the lander's window to get in. Before he could enter, Walker was swarmed with rock aliens that broke his helmet open and killed him. All of this happened in front of Anderson's eyes. And just as he continued to watch, a much larger alien rock came out of nowhere and dragged Walker's body away. Anderson knew he had to get away now. He launched the lander, hoping Gray would rescue him. Unfortunately, the Department of Defense informed Gray that Anderson was infected and that he must abort the rescue mission. Just as Anderson reached the orbit, the lander's engines shut off. And as it began its free fall into the abyss, Small rocks within the craft started to float around, some of which revealed themselves to be rock aliens. 
Anderson is attacked and infected by the rock aliens, preventing him from controlling the vehicle. Unable to maneuver the lander, Anderson ends up crashing into Gray and Freedom, marking the end of the Apollo 18 mission. NASA has no official tapes to tell us what really happened to the crew of Apollo 18, if there even was a mission. However, the director of the movie Apollo 18 claimed that all the footage used in the movie was found in NASA classified archives. Although it is a B-rated movie, made on a mere $5 million, it's a surprisingly well-researched piece of alternate space history. As Apollo 18 is a found footage film, we only get to see the action through cameras in the spacecraft and the astronauts' suits. The movie's official tagline was, decades-old found footage from NASA's abandoned Apollo 18 mission where two American astronauts were sent on a secret expedition reveals the reason the U.S. has never returned to the moon. When you watch the movie, you can see the producer's creativity as there are high-resolution shots from the suit cams, much grainier shots through the lander module cameras, and excessive use of fisheye lenses. The director claims all footage is real NASA material, put together from 84 hours of classified footage. However, NASA officials claim that the film is purely fictional with no connection to reality. Sure, there were plans for Apollo 18, 19, and 20 missions, but they were all canceled in 1970 due to budgetary constraints. The last official NASA mission to the moon was Apollo 17 in December 1972. But the studio who released the film Apollo 18 remained adamant that whatever they showed on the screen was real. They even involved a famous scientist and researcher of UFO phenomenon, Stanton Friedman. Friedman gave several interviews in favor of the film. He raised terrifying concerns. People ask, why was there no Apollo 18 mission? I ask, what happened to Apollo 18 and Apollo 19? They were both paid for, and astronauts were trained. What happened to these missions? Friedman hinted to the LA Times that secrecy often thrives on ego, suggesting that while he wasn't claiming the footage in question actually existed, it was entirely possible that a hidden, classified side to the story could exist, making perfect sense in that context. He left room for that possibility, fueling speculation. Meanwhile, NASA expressed confidence that most of the public would see the film for what it was, pure entertainment. Bob Jacobs, the deputy for communications at NASA, explained that using a mockumentary style was simply a clever marketing strategy to enhance the movie's appeal, not an indication of hidden truths. NASA provided the producers with public domain footage from the actual moon missions and even allowed them to use its official meatball logo on the actors' spacesuits, but the space agency said it had no formal involvement in the film. Initially, NASA officials didn't realize the movie makers planned to portray the story as a real-life expose. Bert Ulrich, NASA's liaison for multimedia, film, and television collaborations, alleged, We were always under the impression it was fictional. It was basically never touted as anything but fictional. After we learned about it, the script went through a couple rewrites. They did reshoots. The final project wasn't exactly what we thought it was going in. It had a Blair Witch feel to it. The Blair Witch Project, 1999, is a horror film that follows three film students who venture into the Black Hills Forest in Maryland to make a documentary about a local legend known as the Blair Witch. The movie is presented as found footage, supposedly recovered after the students mysteriously disappeared. Their eerie encounters in the forest, combined with the growing tension and fear among the group, lead to a terrifying climax. The film became famous for its low-budget, realistic style and effective use of suspense, making it a cultural phenomenon and pioneering the found-footage horror genre. It raked in a whopping $248 million worldwide. But there's a stitch. The Blair Witch Project is a fictional movie. Although it was presented in a found-footage style to make it seem like real events, the story, characters, and events were completely made up. The film was cleverly marketed as if the footage were real even going so far as to create fake missing person reports for the characters and a website promoting the Blair Witch legend, contributing to its initial success and the belief that it might be a true story. However, it is purely a work of fiction. NASA and other critics of the movie Apollo 18 compare it to the Blair Witch Project, which misled audiences into believing that what they were watching was actually true. Interestingly, this isn't the first time the American people have doubted NASA and believed they were lying to them. Take the moon landing conspiracy as an example. 
The fake moon landing conspiracy is one of the most enduring and widely circulated conspiracy theories of the modern era. According to proponents of the theory, NASA's historic Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969, along with subsequent missions, was staged by the U.S. government. Conspiracy theorists claim the footage of astronauts walking on the lunar surface was shot on Earth, possibly in a Hollywood studio, and that the entire event was an elaborate hoax designed to win the space race against the Soviet Union. Despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, including scientific data, testimonies from astronauts, and images from various lunar missions, the theory continues to attract believers. One of the most common arguments conspiracy theorists makes revolves around perceived inconsistencies in the photographs and videos from the moon landing. They often point to things like the way shadows fall, the behavior of the American flag, and the absence of stars in the sky as proof that the footage was faked. These claims, however, have been debunked numerous times by experts who explain that the conditions on the moon, including the vacuum of space and the reflective surface, account for these phenomena. In response to these persistent doubts, NASA has released new evidence over the years. High-resolution images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, show clear evidence of the Apollo landing sites, including astronaut footprints and equipment left behind. Yet conspiracy theorists remain unconvinced, according to NASA spokesperson Bob Jacobs. There are a handful of stories that are cyclical, and among them are the moon conspiracy theorists. It seems that no matter what you produce, they just don't believe it. We have all these new images, for example, from LRO that show the landing site. But conspiracy theorists think that somehow we've doctored the photos on the lunar surface. Despite such irrefutable evidence, the moon landing hoax theory persists, driven by distrust of government institutions, a misunderstanding of space science, and the viral nature of misinformation on the internet. For many, it is easier to believe in a grand cover-up than to accept the monumental achievements of human space exploration. The official Apollo 18 was intended to take place in July 1973. It would have seen the mission's commander, CDR Richard Gordon, a veteran of Apollo 12 and Lunar Module Pilot, LMP, Harrison Schmidt, descend to a landing in the crater Gassendi on the northern edge of Mare Humorum. Left behind in lunar orbit would have been Command Module Pilot, CMP, Vance Brand. Note that astronauts Benjamin Anderson, Nathan Walker, and John Gray, the crew members named in the movie Apollo 18, are completely fictitious. No real astronauts of these names ever existed. In the event Schmidt did make it to the moon, despite the cancellation of Apollo 18. He was reassigned to Apollo 17 to explore Taurus Littro, replacing Joe Engel as LMP on that mission so that a scientist did get to the moon's surface before the project was terminated. Schmidt was the first, and so far only scientist to carry out research on another world. Apollo 19 was originally planned for December 1973, with a landing site set on the floor of the prominent Copernicus crater. The crew would have included Fred Hayes from Apollo 13 as commander, William Pogue as command module pilot, and Gerard Carr as lunar module pilot. By the time Apollo 20 was canceled, a crew had not yet been selected. Had the mission proceeded in the summer of 1974, the astronauts would have explored the volcanic domes of the Marius Hills in the Oceanus Procellarum, or possibly the rim of the bright Tycho crater. Although Tycho was seen as a slightly risky landing site due to its terrain, its status as a relatively young crater, possibly less than 200 million years old, made it particularly interesting to geologists. The Saturn V rocket intended for Apollo 20 was instead repurposed to launch the Skylab space station into orbit in 1973. This is NASA's official narrative, but is it true? Did the Apollo 18 mission really happen as shown in the movie? Did the astronauts encounter deadly alien creatures on the lunar surface? Tell us your opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell for more videos.